Hi there everyone, welcome to a new episode of Quick Shifter. Ducati always has been a brand known for its radicality. The machines produced in Bologna are often considered among the raciest you can find on the whole market. But still, Ducati isn't one to leave its customers fully satisfied and when the Street Fighter V4 was released, some thought this is way too much. A roadster with more than 208 horsepower, how could anyone tame such a beast? Well, in 2020, Ducati has found an answer to that and transformed its Panigale V2 in a naked bike. And today we are reviewing the Ducati Street Fighter V2. Today it is Ducati time! But before, let me tell you a story. The story of a man that wanted to share its passion in the broadest way possible. And believe it or not, that man needs you. So, right now, we are all gonna pause the video. We will all subscribe to the channel, which is probably good for your health. We turn on the notification bell to receive all the alerts as soon as a new video is released. And a like. And now we talk about Ducati. In 2018, the Italian bike maker made a gigantic turn in its history by abandoning once and for all the twin engine for its sports bike. They released the Panigale V4, allowing for a new era in terms of power and handling. And since the disappearance of the Street Fighter 1098 in 2013, the brand didn't have any naked Street Fighter anymore. But this wasn't meant to last. And in 2000. 20, a new monster was about to shake the whole industry, the Ducati Street Fighter V4. And the idea is so simple. You take the Panigale V4, you strip it from its fairings, you add a straight handlebar and voila! You get the most powerful roadster of all time with more than 208 horsepower, a technology that would make some cars pale in comparison and a price that will make your banker want to leave its job. And you know what? I don't like this bike. In my definition, a roadster is by its very nature a torque oriented machine and by taking the engine from the Panigale V4 without any modification the Street Fighter V4 is rightfully extraordinarily powerful but it lacks a lot of torque and thrust feeling below 10,000 rpm I would even add that the bike reaches its maximum peak torque even higher than the Panigale V4 but we are here today to talk about this thing and this is the answer to the people that consider the Street Fighter V4 let's say maybe a bit too scary or they are careful let's say they are careful uh, stripping a sports bike to its bare minimum and making it a naked fighter seems to have very good results so what did Ducati do with the Street Fighter V2 they took the Panigale V2 took it to its very bare minimum had a straight handlebar and here we are basically the idea is to have the same concept but one stage lower to have some something that it's still very, very racy, but a bit more usable in everyday driving. Will it succeed in that task? It is my pleasure to tell you. So, wouldn't you like a small static tour of this Street Fighter V2? Well, first things first, this bike is gorgeous. The Street Fighter stands atop the most beautiful roadsters in the industry and this V2 little sister won't be any different. Of course, there are always some compromises when you lower price, but here you really must give it your whole to notice it. And one thing this bike likes compared to the V4, maybe because it doesn't need it, is the winglets that you can still purchase as an option. In my opinion, they spoil a bit of the general line of the V4 and here I really do think the bike looks a bit more graceful without them. The front lightning is really incredibly sick as well as this rear suspension unit which is really really incredibly beautiful. It's taken directly from the Panigale V2. I will quickly show you 
the rear light which is in my opinion the most beautiful in all the motorcycle industry followed very closely by the rsv4 and the tuono v4 but you know what tastes are personal what isn't personal is this engine which is directly derived from the panigale v2 and the recipe was already known with the v4 and ducati cooked the same meal with different ingredients we lose two horsepower units a pinch of torque but you still have a very very mean l-shaped twin cylinder that is not here to joke unfortunately at least for me this bike is like its sport sister still too high rpm oriented and gives its maximum torque at 9000 rpm which is a bit too much for a roadster in my opinion it was ducati's choice we will see in the dynamic part if they were right to do so the frame is the same as the panigale a monocoque aluminum and the bike is very very light slightly under 400 pounds the seat 8 is a bit on the upper side let's see how i feel on it as you can see the position on the street fighter v2 feels quite natural we don't have too much pressure on the wrists i wouldn't recommend this bike for riders under 5.5 feet or 170 centimeters still the bike the legs are quite high on this uh, bike to allow for a dynamic riding and handling but i still think that all in all it is a very very good compromise so as you can see position feels natural on the street fighter v2 still i wouldn't recommend the bike for riders under 5.5 feet or 170 centimeters because we are quite high on it not too much pressure on the wrists but still an aggressive position which is ideal for dynamic riding and handling and the legs aren't the most comfortable you can find on a roadster so, as you'd expect, the sport jeans of the Street Fighter makes it quite the tall bike to ride, but if you are above 5.5 feet high, it will give you a nice riding position. Fuel tank capacity is 17 liters or 4.5 gallons, which should give you about 150 miles of range. As you can see, a capable, light and somewhat comfortable bike. Ducati didn't compromise too much on the suspension and the brakes. Front is a fully adjustable 43 mm BPF Showa fork and all of the rage of the engine stopped by M4.32 Brembo monoblock calipers, which despite not being the latest fashion in braking industry, are still extremely powerful and precise. The bike is mounted by default with Pirelli Diablo Rosso 4 tires, an extremely good middle ground between road and race usage. The rear suspension is a bit more comfort road oriented than the Panigale, but you will still be able to give it a run for its money without ever so slightly regretting it. So let's take a look at the dashboard. Here I would say this is the part that I'm most disappointed with the Street Fighter V2. It is the same screen as the new monster which isn't by itself a problem but this bike doesn't cost the same as a monster and another bike which is close to the price range of the street fighter v2 the speed triple 1200 rs makes this screen looks ridiculous and hold still a lot of information available there is no fuel gauge here but i think i'm gonna stop fighting because ducati won't learn it seems that it is not because you are riding a sports bike or a sporty roadster that you don't want to know when you are reaching the bottom of your fuel tank technology wise the street fighter has a very good package cornering abs leaning angle traction control wheelie control a quick shifter up and down and giant brake control and you can purchase the ducati multimedia system option to connect your smartphone to the bike let's awaken the beast sound is still one of the very very big strengths in ducati bikes let's hear it <laughs> I want to ride this thing badly and I suggest we fulfill my desires and that we have directly on the dynamic part. See you! And here we go for some dynamic impressions of this brand new Ducati Street Fighter V2. Uh, many thanks to uh, our friends at Espace Merit dealership which lent us this bike I don't do that much advertising for them on the English channel since you are watching the videos from 
very, very far sometimes, but it's always good to remind people that I don't get those bikes for free, they don't appear out of nowhere, so many thanks to them. So we will start with this, let's say, urban tour as I like to call them, to talk about a bit of the practical aspects of the bike, and we will start, of course, with the riding position of this Street Fighter. So, riding position on this thing is um, a bit peculiar, not that uh, very far from another sporty roadster, but so on the top side we are quite relaxed, the back is not too much lean forward, no pressures on the wrist whatsoever, I feel very very natural and comfortable in that aspect, but the legs are quite up, I feel a bit cramped, of course as you may already know I'm quite tall, 189 centimeters, I'm sorry I don't have the equivalency in feet uh, on my mind, but it will appear on the screen, so uh, you will really feel that the, the legs are here made for uh, a sporty riding, a sporty usage, but once again this is the reason reason why the Street Fighter was made and in that aspect I don't think we can say that Ducati didn't deliver on their promise. The handling on this bike is fantastic! Fantastic! You almost don't feel it at all. It's really, really light, a true feather, and even sometimes maybe lighter than some 600 rotsers. So, of course, not the same price, but uh, it's so, so easy to handle. 178 kilos in dry weight, I think. So, those are numbers that are quite close from those of a KTM Duke 890R, which is a bike with almost 40 horsepower left. So, this is really impressive and the Street Fighter handles magnificently. Let's talk about the ergonomics here because I have some things to say. The first thing I want to talk about is the rear view mirrors which are really gorgeous, they are beautiful, but they are not that handy. You cannot adjust them the way you want them to. If you look closely, I have my arms which are in the way, I don't see really really well i have to you know take my arms tuck my arms inside to see what's happening uh, behind me and there isn't any way to adjust this uh, for it to work simply then we will have the switch gears which in my opinion they feel a bit i don't want to say cheap but i, I don't know i talked about it in the in the static tour so you know what i think about them but uh, they are easy to use this isn't a problem they they aren't too much buttons here so it's it's quite easy to manipulate but i don't know it feels a bit cheap for a 17000 euros bike I don't know. Then the screen also, you know what I think about it, but it's clear, it displays the information in a very, very um, bright manner, so no problem whatsoever here. The levers are another story. Uh, brake is very, very good, very precise, but the, the gear switching on this bike is a bit painful. It's still something that is a bit hard to pass and I'm not even mentioning the quick shifter which is in this bike one of the worst I've seen um, with a, a meshy feeling you know you don't really feel when you are switching gears up or down um, the selection isn't that precise and sometimes you are wondering did I switch my gear up or down I'm not really sure I have to check um, the dashboard to be sure um, it's it's a strange feeling even even more on the downside than the upside but still it, it lacks a bit of precision fuel consumption on the Street Fighter is a bit on the high side. I have a 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers here, but the, the bike is still on its very, very early mileage. It only has 154 kilometers, so about 100 miles. So it may lower after the first maintenance. So I won't say that uh, it's um, the, the definitive number since my, my Super Duke had something like 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers, but the bike had more than, but the bike had more than 300 uh, cc's of displacement uh, and 180 horsepower but I think it's not reasonable to compare it here because the bike is still on its early you know riding uh, miles heat generation on the engine here is a problem and here we are not talking about the first miles of the bike I, I don't know I think all the, the Ducati bikes have that problem the, the, the bikes they tend to heat a lot and I can feel it even if uh, the weather is a bit uh, more warm now than it was on the, the previous reviews but I, I, I still think that this bike eats way too much and uh, when the temperatures are gonna start rising things are gonna become 
very, very painful for you. Also, talking about passenger riding on the Street Fighter V2 is not the most pleasing experience ever. I know that you are not thinking about taking uh, all of your friends or your girlfriend or your boyfriend to very long trips with this bike. It's not made for that, but you have to know that the position is really, really uncomfortable. My usual passenger complained about the fact that uh, the, um, the seat was very slippery and the legs were very, very cramped. She had uh, her knees hurting even without uh, leaning on the bike. So I think this may be one of the worst uh, passenger riding experiences you can find on a sporty roadster today. And so we are reaching the end of this uh, urban tour. I wouldn't say that the Street Fighter is the most pleasing bike to use inside a city, but she will be totally enough until you reach the part that interests us, which means the open road part. And here we go, boys and girls, we are here on the dynamic part now and we will see if this engine, this two-cylinder engine is worthy of being called the son of the Panigale. As of now, I can tell you already one thing, handling on this bike is a wonder! Wow, so, so much precision on the chassis, incredible! We are on the sport riding mode, which is the most aggressive and if we turn the throttle... Hmm. First of all, I have one conclusion right from the go. Power is very, very high on the RPM range. But this is no wonder, because this bike has 153 horsepower. And if you take the comparison with the KTM Duke 890R, which has something like 120 horsepower, we only have 60 cc of displacement in difference and a very similar engine architecture. And still this bike has much, much more power than the KTM. And the only way you can attain those kind of numbers are by reaching very, very high RPM. So I would say that it's not the behavior I like the most. I really, really love when bikes have lots of torque, as I told you already, but still I can understand the pleasure of reaching high RPM. Listen to that. Oh my God. It's, it's satisfying. I won't lie, it's satisfying. Not the, the, the bike I would love to have every day, but it's still great to use. Still, there is one thing I, I noticed on the bike, on the engine. I don't know if it's because of the settings, the electronic settings, but the, the bike seems to have something like um, a lag when you turn the throttle there is something like uh, a delay the, the the throttle doesn't enter automatically and immediately so that's a bit a bit disturbing and here we're gonna test the chassis on this part your french comrades had the opportunity to see this during the the review of the of the gs the bmw gsa but you didn't and now today i'm showing you this part which is really really cool in the Chevreuse Valley with a lot of turns. I'm not a professional rider so I won't lean too much with the bike but you can really feel it. it's it's really agile, really really comfortable and easy to use. I don't feel any any difficulty in leaning with the bike. Ah, that's really cool. The, the suspension does a great job though. You feel that it's firm but it absorbs the, the bumps on the road quite nicely. It's, it's a really, really good compromise. I did find on the Street Fighter V4 that things were a bit too, too firm and here everything is good. Oh, and then you go high on the RPM. Oh, Hayabusa, nice. Have fun, my friend, have fun with this incredible bike. If we take a look at the brakes, Oh, the M4.32 are very, very good brakes indeed. No need to anything higher than this on this bike. Feeling is precise, lots of stopping power. The bike isn't that heavy, so that works flawlessly. And really, you have a lot, lot of confidence with this braking and uh, stopping system. Bit of RPM, let's go. Woo, nice, nice. That's cool, that's really cool. So, what can I say about the, the Street Fighter V2 in dynamic uh, usage? 
it's really really an incredible bike i'm not a fan of the engine the way it's made because i really love um lots of you know grunt on the low rpm but still for people that really love to reach those last rpm it's a really really fun bike suspension is phenomenal handling is incredible hi there my friend and the braking power is on par with everything on this bike so on that aspect many many congratulations to ducati for doing this incredible motorcycle we've reached the end of our dynamic part and now we will go back to the static for the conclusion of this video ducati definitely nailed it with this bike lots of things are going for it but there still may be one or two hiccups i will talk to you about in the conclusion and what awaits us now is competition but I'm a bit annoyed here because the Street Fighter V2 exists almost in a category of its own so I will try to compare it to bikes that are almost the same power or price range. And the first one that comes to my mind is the German BMW S1000R. In this new version, this mean bad boy delivers 165 horsepower and 113 newton meters of torque. And to be quite frank with you, I don't like this bike. I think I already said this in the review. Well, the reason why is that I find its inline four cylinder to be way too lacking in terms of low range torque, a bit like the Street Fighter V2, to be honest. But it is a very, very solid machine with lots of technology and a screen. Oh my God, that screen. Still, it starts at a lower price than the Street Fighter V2 and with all the options, it ends at a much, much higher price. But your choice. Then we will talk about our English friends with the Trim Speed Triple 1200 RS. That one I love. So much torque and power in these inline three cylinders with more than 180 horsepower, in a bike with a stupendous agility and handling, and with a finish only Triumph can make. And yes, I'm saying that even in regard to Ducati. A bit more expensive, but not by that much, and everything is one step above the Italian machine. Finally, the last one will be the brand new 2022 Yamaha MT-10. I still haven't had the chance to review it, but things are looking good. I mean, not the bike per se, I, I still don't like the aesthetics of it. And in that aspect, the Street Fighter literally obliterates the Japanese machine. But the cross-plane inline four cylinders not happy with having the sound and the behavior of a V4 has got now 166 horsepower under the hood lots of torque, a technology that no one can forget about this bike and a very, very good price, almost 2000 euros or even dollars less expensive than the Ducati. Still, it is not as finished as this bike and it's a bit heavier, so I guess you could say no perfection in this world. And here we are at the conclusion of this review. Would I say that the Ducati Street Fighter V2 is a very, very good bike Yes, definitely. It is a gorgeous machine with an extraordinary engine. Even if I am not the target of that kind of very high pitch kind of behavior, lots of technology and a superb handling. But would I also say that this bike is way too expensive for what it is? Yes, also definitely. The Ducati Street Fighter V2 lacks the power, the finish, the screen, and some features to be able to claim that kind of price point. When bikes like the S1000R or the MT-10 that are less expensive and more powerful and with more technology, or even competitors like the Speed Triple 1200 RS, which is a bit more expensive but steps above the Street Fighter in every aspect exist. But I do know that some things are irrational. And if you're not comfortable with the idea of spending more than 20,000 euros or dollars in a Street Fighter V4, but you fell in love with the design and the philosophy of this new lineup at Ducati, the Street Fighter V2 is definitely made for you. Here we are at the end of this video. I really do hope you liked it. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It is the best way you can support my work. 
also leave a like and a comment. I would really, really love to see and read about your opinions on those video and those bikes. In the meantime, guys and girls, please stay safe, enjoy riding. See you next week.